A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 24th of July 2022. So these are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. Now without wasting much time let us get into the first news article discussion. Take a look at this FAQ news article. This article is related to a termination of pregnancy of an unmarried woman. See, an unmarried woman went to Delhi High Court to get permission to end her pregnancy, but the Delhi High Court refused to allow her. So she appealed to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court allowed her to end the pregnancy at 24 weeks. The top court said if a medical board assessed that the pregnancy could be terminated without any harm to the mother, then she could go ahead and have an abortion under MTP Act. So this is the crux of the news article given here. See in this news article discussion we are not going to cover the entire provisions of Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act that is MTP Act. If you want to know about the detailed provision of this act I request you to watch our March 11th Hindu newspaper analysis video. Today we will discuss about the High Court ruling and Supreme Court's decision and the significance of this decision in detail. Before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for your reference just go through it so here i have mentioned some of the basic provisions about mtp act just have a look at this here you can notice that only the word pregnant woman is mentioned whether she could be married or unmarried is not clearly stated also the word partner is mentioned instead of husband you will understand why we are discussing this at the end of the discussion now we'll see different interpretation by high court and the supreme court see we already saw that the unmarried woman went to high court first before appealing to supreme court her plea was that she had a consensual relationship with her partner but he had refused to marry her after she discovered her pregnancy at about 22 weeks we know that being unmarried and raising a child is a stigma in our society so she decided to terminate her pregnancy so when the woman approached the delhi high court the delhi high court said that the medical termination of pregnancy act allows only married women to terminate the pregnancy after 20 weeks so as she is unmarried she would not be eligible for abortion the court that is the delhi high court further said it would amount to killing the fetus since she was in the 23rd week of her pregnancy the court suggested to give birth to the child and offer up the child for adoption so not satisfied with the decision of delhi high court she appealed to supreme court so now what did the supreme court said See here the Supreme Court took a broad view of the issue. The Supreme Court said the MTP Act which was amended in 2021 has the word partner instead of husband. So it expresses the intention of the law that not only married women but also unmarried women was also eligible for abortion. The judge said that the petition could not be denied the benefit of law on the grounds that she was unmarried. The compassionate judges noted that the woman had already stated that she was the eldest of five siblings in a family of agriculturalist and she had a BA degree without an adequate income so it will be difficult for her to raise the child by herself further the bench of the supreme court directed the director of the all india institute of medical sciences that is aims to set up a medical board of two doctors to examine the women supreme court asked to determine whether it was safe to terminate the pregnancy at this stage without affecting the life of the mother if aims opines that it is safe to conduct abortion then she can abort the fetus now what is the significance of this decision you have to make note of this point See we all know that as per the MTP act all women are allowed to get a medical termination of pregnancy before 20 weeks but only certain categories of women are allowed to have an abortion between 20 and 24 weeks for example survivors of rape minors and uh, married women whose relationship status has altered during this period can have an abortion between 20 and 24 weeks okay 
Now the Supreme Court expanded the law to include unmarried women as part of the MTP Act. So this has given women in similar circumstances an option now to access health care services without having to travel the long legal route to the top court every time. And allowing unmarried women to medically terminate pregnancies while also protecting the privacy of the person seeking an abortion will give women the reproductive rights they are entitled to. So these are some of the points that you have to make note of from this FAQ news article. A very important news article. Make note of it. So these learned points. Now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See this article here. It says that Continental Automotive India Private Limited is focusing on localization to scale up its business. See, it is a wholly owned subsidiary of Continental AG of Germany. And this is about the news article given here. In this context, let us briefly understand about what is this localization and its significance to India. So what is localization? See, localization is the process of adopting a product or content to a specific market. Here, a slight difference is made to make it appealing to the linguistic, business, cultural and social pattern of the target audience belonging to that particular market. So, for your better understanding, let me give you an example here. Let us take the automobile industry, more specifically cars. Let us take cars. See, every car has a steering wheel, right? But we all have seen in movies that sometimes it will be located on the left side and sometimes on the right side. And this is to carter the audience in the local market and according to the laws of the land. So in other words, personalizing a product or a content to a specific market is called localization. So this is one aspect of localization. Another aspect is simply about the location. I hope you have been heard about localization of data a lot of times in the news. There they are mentioning about the location. See, before foreign companies develop products in their country and later bring them to India. But now India is promoting localization. That is, India is encouraging foreign companies to open factories and manufacturing units in India. So this is another aspect of localization. So with this information, let us see why localization is important from Indian perspective. See, the first and foremost reason is to bring down the trade deficit. We all know trade deficit occurs when the import or more than the exports. Even in yesterday's discussion, we saw about trade deficit. So when a foreign company have manufacturing unit in their country, there is a need for importing the products to meet the demand in India. So if we promote localization, that is if manufacturing units are established in India, then the imports cost can be reduced. And also know that it causes the inflow of foreign investment into India. So this is the first reason. The next reason is that it will increase the output of the country and in turn it will add to the GDP of the country. So this will help in the achievement of 5 trillion dollar economy by 2024 to 25 envisioned by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And the next reason is the employment. See if manufacturing units are going to be opened in India then it will help in increasing the employment of Indians. Thus bringing down the unemployment ratio. Adding to this we all know about India's demographic dividend right. Demographic dividend is nothing but the growth in an economy that is the result of a change in the age structure of a country's population. Or in other words, the growth in economy because of the utilization of available working population to the full extent is called demographic dividend. So localization will actually help in utilizing this demographic dividend of India. More working population will be employed in the manufacturing unit. So now coming to company's perspective. So why this Continental Automotive India Private Limited is focusing on localization in India? See, the answer is very simple because India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world and has an exceptional market potential. Apart from this, India has undergone more social and economic changes in the past years than any other country. So the foreign companies find India a potential market for their products. 
along with that india is considered as economic powerhouse for example according to the international monetary fund the country currently accounts for roughly 15% of all global economic growth secondly it is a vital global market it is said that by 2025 india will be the world's third largest consumer market with the largest middle class on the planet and finally it is predicted that there will be explosive growth in india this is according to the world economic forum it predicts that there will be a four times increase in consumer spending by 2030 and this will be fueled by a projected 1 billion internet users so because of these reasons the company finds localization will scale up their business in india so these are all some of the important points that you have to know about localization in this news article discussion we saw two aspects of localization one is based on a market and another is based on location then we saw why localization is important from indian perspective it helps in reducing trade deficit it will increase the output of the country and in turn it will add to the gdp of the country then the next reason is employment and it helps in utilizing the demographic dividend of india effectively So with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See this article here it says that the World Health Organization that is WHO has declared the global monkeypox outbreak a public health emergency of international concern that is PHEIC See as per the article the monkeypox outbreak has affected more than 14500 people in 72 countries and this is about the news article given here in this context let us understand when a public health emergency of international concern that is PHEIC is declared before seeing about that you should know about IHR see IHR is expanded as the international health regulations It was established in the year 2005. It represents a binding international legal agreement involving all the member states of WHO. Their aim is to help the international community prevent and respond to actual public health risks that have the potential to cross borders and threaten people worldwide. And based on this regulation only a particular disease is categorized as PHEIC. So now let us see what is a PHEIC. See a PHEIC is defined in the IHR as an extraordinary event which is determined to constitute a public health risk to other states through the international spread of disease and to potentially require a coordinated international response. So this definition implies firstly a situation that is serious sudden unusual or unexpected. Secondly, it carries implications for public health beyond the affected state's national border. And thirdly, it may require immediate international action. So such kind of diseases are declared as PHEIC. Know that the emergency committees under IHR are made of experts and they provide technical advice to WHO director general in the context of a PHEIC. The committee provides view on whether the event constitute a public health emergency of international concern or not. Then it provides temporary recommendations that should be taken by the country experiencing an emergency of international concern and it also provides views on recommendation for other countries to prevent or reduce the international spread of disease and avoid unnecessary interference with international trade and travel and remember this emergency committee makes recommendation on the termination of a PHEIC also though the recommendations are given by them the director general makes the final determination of a phcic and the temporary recommendations to address the situation based on advice from the emergency committee see under the ihr 2005 temporary recommendations actually expire 3 months after their issuance so emergency committee or therefore reconvened at least every 3 months to review the current epidemiological situation and to review whether the event continues to be a public health emergency of international concern or not
and it also reviews whether changes needed to be made to the temporary recommendations or not so now coming to the article see we already saw that monkey pox is declared as phic as per the article as of now the countries are grouped into three categories first is countries with no reported cases or where the last case was from 21 days ago secondly countries with recent imported cases and experiencing human to human transmission and finally countries where cases are being reported and have a history of the presence of the virus and it is also said that the guidelines directed the countries to step up surveillance spread awareness and ensure that at risk groups are not stigmatized so that's all about this news article discussion in this news article discussion we saw in briefly about phic that is public health emergency of international concern and we saw when a disease is declared as phic we saw about the international health regulations that is ihr and then we saw about the emergency committee under ihr as well so these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this article it says that more than 50 percentage of habitats of bat species in the southern western ghats lie outside protected area and as per the article this is the reason for increasing threats faced by the animals the threats include poaching for meat habitat loss and stigma from local communities especially after the covid-19 pandemic so this is the essence of the news article given here and the article mentions six major biodiversity hotspots so in this discussion we are going to focus on that aspect alone the six major biodiversity hotspots mentioned in the article include agastya malai periya tiger reserve ane malai the neel giris the vayanad mudumalai complex and brahmagiri see knowing about the location of all these major biodiversity hotspots is very important because there might be a map based match the following question in the preliminary examination so first let us see about agastya malai know that it is a biosphere reserve it is located in the southernmost end of the western ghats three wildlife sanctuaries that is the shendurne pepara and neyar are located in the site as well as the kalakad mundandurai tiger reserve lies near to it the reserve is home to kani tribes from both tamil nadu and kerala so in this image you can see the agastya mala biosphere reserve here it also has other biosphere reserves go through everything it will be like a revision for you now let us move on to periya tiger reserve it is located in kerala the major rivers through the reserve are mulayar and periyar the forest types include tropical evergreen forest tropical semi evergreen forest moist deciduous forest grasslands and eucalyptus plantations so you can see the location in this map the next hot spot is ane malai it is located on the southern side of the south western ghats landscape it is surrounded by parambikulam tiger reserve on the east chinnar wildlife sanctuary and eravikulam national park on the south western side it was declared as a tiger reserve in the year 2007 so you can see ane malai here Now coming to Neel Giris it is a biosphere reserve it is known for its biodiversity it is rich in flora and fauna and it has the tropical forest biome you can see Neel Giris in the image given here and the next one is Vayanad Mudumalai see Mudumalai is the first sanctuary to be set in India and forms part of the Jawaharlal Nehru National Park It extends over an area of 321 square kilometers in the junction of the three states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala. A variety of habitats ranging from tropical evergreen forest, moist deciduous forest, moist teak forest, dry teak forest, secondary grasslands and swamps are found here. Vayanad Wildlife Sanctuary is contiguous to the protected area of Nahahole and Bandipur of Karnataka on the northeast. and mudumalai of tamil nadu on the south east so the entire stretch from vayanad and mudumalai is classified under protected area see vayanad sanctuary is an integral part of the neelgiri biosphere reserve and it is rich in biodiversity the forest types include 
south indian moist deciduous forest west coast semi evergreen forest and plantations of teak eucalyptus and grevillea so now finally the brahmagiri wildlife sanctuary it is also a part of western ghats and it is located in karnataka the forest includes evergreen and semi evergreen forest and even grasslands it is also rich in biodiversity so that's all about this news article in this news article discussion we saw about six important biodiversity hotspots that you have to remember with respect to preliminary examination so with these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is the preliminary practice question discussion today we have three preliminary practice questions we'll discuss two questions and one question is quiz question for you solve the quiz question and post the correct answer either in the comment section or you can vote your answer in the poll section so look at this first question this question is about public health emergency of international concern that is phaic consider the following statements regarding phaic statement 1 the countries declare phaic where the outbreak has started initially statement 2 only 5 diseases are declared as public health emergency of international concern so far which of the statements given above is are or correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one nor two see the correct answer for the question is option d neither one nor two because both the questions are incorrect statement 1 is incorrect because we saw in the discussion itself director general of who makes the final determination of a phaic it is not something a country declares so this statement is incorrect statement 2 is also incorrect because seven events were declared phaic between 2007 and 2020 The first one in 2009 is H1N1 influenza pandemic then the Ebola outbreak this Ebola outbreak happened twice one is West Africa outbreak in 2013 to 2015 another one is outbreak in Democratic Republic of Congo 2018 to 2020 so this is the only instance in which same disease happened in two different events then comes the polio myelitis 2014 to present then comes zika virus in 2016 and most recently covid 19 2020 to present and recently monkey pox which is just now announced as phaic so phaic were declared seven times and it is for the outbreak of six diseases in two events phaic was declared twice for the same disease which is ebola so this statement becomes incorrect so the correct answer for the question is option d neither one nor two now moving on this question is about localization with reference to localization which of the following statements are incorrect so you have to choose the incorrect statement option a localization helps in increasing the unemployment rate of the country option b localization leads to increase in foreign investment of the country option c localization reduces the current account deficit of a country and option d localization helps in increasing the employment rate of the country so you have to choose the incorrect statement option a is incorrect because localization helps in decreasing the unemployment rate of the country so in this statement it is given in the opposite manner so this statement is incorrect other statements are correct because we saw that in our discussion itself right so moving on to the quiz question this question is about protected area this question was asked in the year 2019 try to answer this question just give it a try i'll post the correct answer in the comment section so now moving on displayed here is the mains question for today's discussion please go through the question write an answer and post it in the comment section so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar is academy youtube channel thank you